Thank you for watching Word on the Street with JP. This message is designed to encourage you to keep the faith, to stay in the fight. And I know it's a fight because I'm battling every day. It's going to be a violent battle, but we have to know that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Matthew, the 11th chapter, the 12th verse tells us how we should fight. It says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence and the violent people take it by force. We, the people of God, must be more violent than ever before. And we must be prepared to be able to defend ourselves from anything that the enemy throws at us. We seize the kingdom of God or God's way of doing things by force. And we must get into the fight knowing that it'll be rough. That is, if we're doing it right. If we are doing it right, then he's going to throw everything but the kitchen sink at us because I know that that's what's happening to me. It's a fight, a real battle. He'll use those weaknesses that you thought you overcame to take you out. The most important thing is to trust God through it all. In his word, it says that we win. No matter what it may look like, no matter how intense the battle gets, we win. Now, I know this message hasn't begun sounding like one of encouragement and the realization of something that we hope for, but make sure you watch until the end because at the end is where our hope lies. In the very near future, some of us may experience something that may go a little like this. Imagine if you will, you're sitting at your desk staring out the window of your ground floor office. You think to yourself, man, 15 more minutes and it's lunchtime and I am starving. You know, I think I'm gonna try out that new bistro on the corner. They say that their meatball subs are the best in the city. So I'm getting ready to find out in 15 minutes. Hmm. Well, maybe, maybe I'll just go on to the house and finish up my day because I'm getting kind of tired. Maybe I'll even take a nap before the kids get home. Hmm, what, wonder what all that confusion is out there on I-85. Hey guys, did you see that? That truck just plowed into that car at almost 80 miles an hour. Wow, the car's starting to pile up. It, is, is that a semi coming at us? Everybody out of the way. That truck's coming right for us. In all that confusion, most won't realize that this has happened. That's right, the rapture of the church. Millions have vanished and millions are dying all around you. And where have all the Christians gone? Some think that this is hyperbole and some think that this is simply a symbolic representation of Jesus dwelling in us. But I assure you that it is not. As a matter of fact, besides everyone on the earth hearing the gospel, this is the very next thing on God's timeline nearing the end of the church age. The rapture or the great catching away is when the prophecy laid out in 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, the 16th through the 18th verse is fulfilled by Jesus himself. He will come and gather up all the real Christians and take them home to heaven to be with him forever. Those Christians who have gone on to glory since Christ's resurrection will also be caught up to meet him in the clouds, earning their immortal bodies. Devout Christians who are still alive when the rapture happens will seem to those who didn't make the cut to have just disappeared, vanished, gone. The Christians who are alive will also receive their glorified bodies at this time. So the word of God says that this won't be shown to those who are left behind, but for those who have put their trust in Jesus, it will happen in the twinkling of an eye. Be encouraged. Some seem to think that the whole world will see him, but they won't. 
because Jesus doesn't even touch down to the earth. And they're confusing that with his second coming. The rapture is not his second coming. The second coming is when he comes to set up his millennial or a thousand year reign on the earth. So a second after the rapture happens, total chaos and fear will grip the inhabitants of the earth. Aircraft will come plummeting to earth. Unmanned motor vehicles will veer off their path and careen into buildings, homes, and places where people or pedestrians gather. Those who regulate nuclear cores on reactors will disappear. Those who are pumping gas will disappear. It's going to be a moment of total chaos that seems to be unrepairable. And I'll prove it in the Word of God in Luke chapter 17, starting at verse 34, and it reads, I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Verse 35, two women will be grinding at the mill and one shall be taken and the other left. Verse 36, two men shall be in the field and one shall be taken and the other left. 37, and they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Wow. So the fact that he didn't say there'll be five men toiling in the field, two will be taken and three left, he gives a precise indication that half of those who believe that they're following Christ will be left behind. For he says in verse 34, I tell you in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other left. So verses 34 through 37 are indicative of it happening around the world because he specifically says in verse 34 in that night. And so then it says in verse 35, two women shall be grinding together. So grinding takes place outside during the daytime. So you're looking at a nighttime occurrence and then a daytime occurrence. So it's going to happen globally as the Christians who are devout to their faith and put their trust in Jesus will be snatched away off of this earth to meet Jesus in the clouds and to be with him forever in heaven. Another scripture that I like is 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, the 16th verse, where it gets personal for the Lord, for he personally facilitates this occurrence. It says, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, fourth chapter, 16th verse says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first 17 then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord verse 18 therefore encourage one another with these words so that's what we're doing we're encouraging one another with these words Luke, the 12th chapter, the 40th verse, tells us what we should be doing in the time of our waiting for his arrival to gather the church. Luke, the 12th chapter, the 40th verse says, Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when we think not. So he's saying, be found doing his will, so you can be counted amongst the number and that's why I said at the top of the show, we are being bombarded and distracted with old battles that we're having to re-engage in because the enemy is battling for our soul just like Jesus is asking us to battle, to stay in his grace. And I thank God that Jesus pays attention to the matters of the heart and not what we actually do. However, we do need to live a repentant life if we are indeed doing that, staying in our word, watching and praying, I believe that this promise is for you, the rapture of the church. In Matthew, 
the 24th chapter, the 42nd verse, it says, So watch, therefore, ye know not what hour the Lord doth come. So he reiterates Luke 12, verse 40. So that is absolutely the most amazing promise. So we must be caught in his will when he comes. And even if we're not, I believe that he judges matters of the heart. However, we need to do our very best to live this life for Christ while we yet exist on the earth. So, as we know, this will not be seen by everyone on the earth. It'll be a private event that happens exclusively for the church, for those who are devout to their faith and devout to trusting in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The reason I know that is because we're watching television and cinematic productions and they're all getting us ready for the rapture. A lot of the sci-fi films have rapture scenes in them. Have you noticed that? Being desensitized, just like we got desensitized to premarital sex in the in the 70s and 80s, <laughs> you know, on TV. I remember there was a time where you couldn't see that kind of stuff on television. As a matter of fact, we look at shows like Leave it to Beaver and and other shows in that era and they all had separate beds, you know. Um, they didn't even want to entertain the fact of being sexual in their production as, as they wanted it to remain a family show, a show that everyone could watch and enjoy. But the world was a lot different then. So the rapture is going to be a private event. The world as we know it right now, meaning unsaved people, are attempting to desensitize us so they can blame it on a whole lot of other stuff. Oh, it was a chemical agent or a biological agent. These people just vanished, disappeared, disintegrated. Or maybe the aliens came and got them. They'll be saying stuff like that. And so they'll cause mass confusion in order to deflect from the truth. No, Jesus came. You didn't see him because you're not one of his elect. And he took his people. So the rapture or the catching away of believers will take place secretly when Jesus comes and breaks through those clouds to get his church from off the earth. He taught that in 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, the 13th through the 18th verse. And he taught it in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50 through 54. So the Bible does not give a, a date of the rapture. He says that's why we need to be caught in his will. He says, no man know the, n knows the day nor the hour, not even the son nor the angels, but the father alone. So consequently, believers that aren't in their word, <laughs> you know, um, have differing views when it says it right there in the Bible. You got a lot of teachers and preachers that'll go on and they'll give specific dates. A lot of them have been debunked. We have to trust in what the word of God says. So, in the twinkling of an eye, that means a fraction of a second, this will happen. One moment you'll see your girl as y'all are drinking orange juice at brunch, and then the next, boom, she'll be gone. While you're watching her, just disappear. A supernatural event of unprecedented proportion. And the awesome thing about it is the Bible says that we'll be changed. We'll put, take off mortality and put on immortality and we'll be just like him. So when that day happens, there will be a breakdown of emergency services, social services. There'll be looting, mass murder, not to mention those who perished from the unmanned projectiles like cars and trucks and planes and helicopters and roller coasters you know and so we are looking at a day that is going to be the most memorable day not only for those who are called up to be with Jesus in the clouds but for those who yet remain on the earth having believed that they were believers so be encouraged the day will soon come and don't wake up thinking, was I left behind? <laughs> you know, because there'll be no 
way that you'll miss this event as total chaos will erupt on the earth. Be found in his will. So be encouraged. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to accept him today. Not only as fire insurance or to miss this horrible occurrence for those who have not put their trust in God, but because you want to serve people and serve Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If that's you, or you simply want to rededicate your life, I invite you to say this simple prayer. Lord God, I'm a sinner in need of salvation. I believe that you sent your one and only begotten son to the earth who paid the perfect sacrifice on the cross at Calvary to redeem me or buy me back from my sin debt. I believe that on the third day he rose again with all power, seated at the right hand of the Father. So please forgive me of my sins. Come into my life that I might be your child and that you might be my God. And it's in Jesus' holy name that we pray. Amen. So I believe that if you said that simple prayer, that you are one of the newest members of the family of faith. So my first recommendation to you would be to connect yourself with truly saved people, Christian people, believers, those with faith, also with a Bible-based ministry that you might grow in the things of God. And so if you dug what you heard today, feel free to look me up on YouTube. Word on the Street with JP is listed on the YouTube channel Rain Radio ATL. That is R E I G N, like it says here, Rain Radio Alpha Tango Lima. Rain Radio ATL. Make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you share. Also, you can find me personally on Facebook, J Parker, J A Y P A R K E R. You can find me on Rumble. You can find me on Faith Social and Twitter. So, Let's do what we need to do to be found faithful. We are battling down here. And some things we won't get right, even though the Bible says that we're more than conquerors. Sometimes our faith fails. Sometimes we get distracted by what we see. But make sure that you do not dwell in self-condemnation and do the next right thing. Get right back up off the ground. Get back in the saddle and do the will of God today. So thank you so much for listening and watching Word on the Street with JP. I'm your host, JP. And until next time, that's right. We'll see you on the radio.